of arsenic? Yeah. It's poison. It's a poison that is a trace element they find in the environment. It's in the ground. Now, there are two different types of um, arsenic. One is organic. Organic is fine in the plants that we eat, but it's not too much because they are organic, they have less, and it's safe to eat that. The second one is inorganic. So the inorganic one is the toxic one. That's the one that gives us poison. How do we get that? When I first found out, I wasn't happy about it. I said, I don't want to eat rice with poison in there. But we all eat rice. The orga inorganic one is that they are all in the ground from the pollution. You know, you know the toxic waste everywhere. And then they, they can go into the river, go into the streams, go into the well. And then when you plant rice in those fields, they will pick up that arsenic from the, the pollution. So this one, we cannot do much about it. But what you can do is when you buy the rice, you have to know where the rice comes from. There are about 15% are grown in California. 49% in Arkansas. The last one I heard that rice from Texas has a lot of arsenic. It's in the soil, yeah? So you have to be careful where you get the rice from. The, the one they suggest is the Thai uh, jasmine rice and uh, basmatic, uh, basmatic rice. From the foreign country, they have less arsenic. Yeah. OK. Now. Uh, we're going to give the time to Didi. Didi is trying to um, tell us how to cook the joke. There's another way to use rice. I tell you a short story. How the joke become a joke. OK. Use your mic, Okay. Long time ago, this man, he's a poor man. But he had guests coming to his house. Now he only had a few cups of rice. So what he gonna do is not enough for everybody to, to eat. So when he cooking it, he put more water, and then he put more water. So it become a big watery pot with rice. So the rice are very thin. And then they uh, feed the whole group that they have in the house. So now we learn how to have joke. But joke in the history in China is when people get sick, they cannot eat solid. They can just eat the liquid. Then they will just put some meat flavor, some kind of nutrition inside. And then they, they nourish the sick person with that. And then they help them to come back you know, to the normal life. But that's one benefit of the joke. There, there are different ways of making it. Um, and in Thailand, that's where I come from. We eat that a lot for breakfast, and um, it's uh, and we, we treat it just like um, Oriental noodle soup. We would top, we would put topping like um, chili pepper, vinegar with chili, you know, uh, fried garlic, all kinds that you want to top. On. Um, you can put pork rind, you know, dry fish and stuff like that. You could just top them. Um, and if you cook with chicken, usually you would boil the chicken first to get the stock out of it. But this one, I just use the ground pork. So I marinate the ground pork with garlic and uh, some um, uh, Chinese soy sauce, because it's white, whiter, whiter color, and uh, white pepper. And I pretty much use the um, cooked rice, add lots of water. And I, I plan to make a lot less, but my husband said, oh, you know, it only takes 
little rice to make this, so I double it and it became so large. I have to change pot twice. <laughs> so, and, and you can make it thinner up to how you want it. You know, just add more water. And I, I only use the chicken flavor um, bouillon in this case because I didn't make the broth myself. Um, I like it with little ginger. I don't know if some of you might um, get to it. And they are young ginger. Young ginger is the best. So Julian, really tiny. And um, that's about it. You just keep simmering it. And uh, we put Chinese parsley is good to add um, green onions. And the white thing, that is also rice. It's rice noodle. <laughs> OK, so Sister Nepali provided that. Um, it's, it's just kind of like a uh, rice puff. OK, so deep fry, and then you put it on top. Hope you guys, you guys enjoy. And I have a lot more in the back if you want to take, take it home. OK, thank you. Okay, they're gonna pass pass my uh, rice. It says Andreas Brunner's uh, Tahitian rice. Actually, I had to call my sister in Tahiti because she gave me. She's the one. She made you know, and I asked her, "Oh, what's the name? You know, where's, where it come from?" She said, "It's something that she made up." So anyway, it's very easy. You need your rice, and then in another big pot, you put cut up onions, curry powder, cinnamon. And then you just kind of, you know, cook it with a little bit of uh, oil and I forgot I have this. A little bit of oil and, uh, and butter. Then you add your rice in that pot, stir it, put some salt, and then you add your uh, frozen peas, green onion, and cashews. So you only need two pots, your pot of rice and that big pot. And you mix it. So very easy. Thank you. Mochi rice. I have to thank uh, Peggy for the opportunity because of this, I learned that mochi rice has two types. So just like a regular rice, you have the long grain and you have the round regular rice, same as the um, mochi rice. Okay, so more or less what. The, what I go by is two cup of mochi rice and two and a half cup of water. So you can double that, multiply that uh, many times, depending on how much you cook. Um, Chinese way normally have a Chinese sausage, um, char siu, mushroom, but um, Local flavor, I guess we can use spam instead of uh, using all those, uh, yeah, lap term too. So, um, what else can I tell? I'll just go through here. You did <coughs> the oil that on the ingredients there, mainly is to saute the uh, mushroom. Now, dry mushroom, you have to soak. And the rice, normally, I wash that first, strain it, and then put in the rice cooker. And only at that time, I put the required measurement of water into it. Okay, the reason why you wash the rice is so that you can take away those uh, white stuff from the rice. So some people like to eat, but I don't care. I cook rice lay the way it is, or I can wash them too. Okay, so after you finish, okay, the meat, I mentioned about saute the, um, the mushroom, and then the, after that, I put the uh, which is the Chinese sausage and char siu. And put some oyster sauce just to add the flavor to it. And you mix it together with the uh, mochi rice. This is the first time that I cooked that the long, long grain uh, mochi rice. So it seems a like little bit stickier than the other one. But if you mix it good, everything will taste good.
Thank you. Mine is kimchi fried rice. It's, it's so uh, simple and then make very short time, make 10 minutes you can make when you're really hungry. Just on the, on the fry pan, you put the olive oil. Some people, you know, they're using uh, butter instead of olive oil. And then, um, and then you throw the kimchi, chopped kimchi, um, and then one teaspoon brown sugar. You put the sugar, and then you gotta cook the kimchi uh, first. Then you can add, I like a sliced hot dog, and then tuna, canned tuna, and then um, you, you stir a little bit. Then after that, you add a rice. If you want, you can put the brown rice. I, I like to put the brown rice usually, but. And then um, sometimes I bake in the oven. So it's already, everything is cooked. So you don't have to, you know, bake it too long, maybe 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah. Any questions? <laughs> so this is a, actually the second time I've made um, cabbage rolls, but um, we've made them a lot with other things, such as uh, grape leaves. So this time I substituted cabbage rolls for it. But basically, what's great about this is it, um, you're using a meat, so we use ground meat for it. And then you add the rice and it makes your meat go further. And it also kind of lightens up your meat a little bit. I made them in the crock pot. You don't have to make them in the crock pot. I don't have an oven in my house. And crock pot's easy for me because I can make them and stick them on all day long. And I come home and they are cooked. Um, so basically, um, anybody that's rolled an egg roll or used taro leaves, you could use taro leaves. You could use cabbage. Um, you could use pretty much any kind of meat. And you just roll it up in your cabbage leaf after you've mixed your meat together with your egg. Um, and your spices, and then you roll it up in your leaf. Um, if you're going to use the crock pot, make sure that you don't put the rolls on the very bottom of your crock pot. You need to put something in the bottom. So I took potatoes and onion and garlic, and I made a layer on the bottom, and then I put a little bit of water in, because you want to steam them. You don't want to boil them like you would a soup in the crock pot. And then just layer your cabbage rolls with your tomato sauce on top um, until you reach the top. Put the lid on turn it on low and let it go for about nine hours. So the, um, the recipe in the book is one that I actually grabbed a recipe off the internet and then I kind of changed it up a little bit because I didn't want to do Worcester sauce, I wanted to do soy sauce, so it was a little bit more island style. So just have fun with it. We will talk about a Singapore rice noodle. Basically, that you have uh, the, the rice noodle you had a boy first? No, no, no. Uh, soaking in warm water is good. Okay. Now, um, the, recipe say, the recipe says that, it, that you had two pieces, but she made more than that tonight, yeah? So she put a lot more. And then you have uh, four garlic cloves, minced it, and then a little bit ginger. Yeah? Yeah, just follow the recipe. Then you had uh, 10 medium raw stream. If you like more stream, you can, you know, put more inside. You shell it and then you take out the, the vein. <clears throat> then half pound char siu, you, you, you want to um, slice it and then cut maybe three more strips inside so that you have plenty more that way. Um, you can use one real, uh, red pepper or also can use one green pepper. It's up to you. Then Use one medium um, onion, the thin slice. Okay. The red pepper and the green pepper is for the color. But sometimes we eat this one, they put the eggs too. Uh -huh. But char siu is also for the color. And that's the meat also. Then the sauce is the five tablespoon soy sauce and two and a half teaspoon sugar and then half teaspoon white pepper powder. You have the black, powder, uh, black um, pepper, but the Chinese use the white uh, pepper. Oh, sorry. Um, usually we put um, the curry powder inside because it gets some yellow color. And then they cook the noodles and the vegetable. They cook the vegetable first, and then they cook the noodle, and then they make the powder, the curry 
powder inside. So it's a little bit, actually it's a Cantonese dish, but because they use uh, curry, they say, oh, they Singapore, because Singapore people like to use um, curry. So I asked uh, Chai, I said, they, they didn't know about it. I said, that's kind of strange. When I go back to look at it, and I said, oh, yeah, they said that it's because they use curry. They said that it's Singapore noodles. But just want to let you know that there is a rice noodle. So we cover rice as a grain, and then we cover rice as a flour, and we cover rice as a noodle. There's many other things, too.